Hello, I'm John Reel, and I am the president of the Valor CMC Foundation, which is the US-based fundraising organization for the Christian Medical College and Hospital of Valor, India. I am joined today by Dr. Raj Narayan, who is an alumnus of the Christian Medical College of Valor and a renowned specialist in neurosurgery. Dr. Narayan received his medical degree from CMC, which was then followed by an internship in neurosurgery as a CMC postgraduate student. He was one of the youngest doctors in the United States to be offered a chair of neurosurgery position, which he accepted at Temple University School of Medicine in Philadelphia. Seven years, seven years later, Dr. Narayan became the chair of neurosurgery at the University of Cincinnati. And another seven years later, he accepted the chair of neurosurgery at Northwell Health in New York, where he works today. At Northwell Health, Dr. Narayan developed one of the most competitive neurosurgery residency training programs in the United States. Regarding his activities in scientific research, Dr. Narayan has been focusing his efforts on discoveries related to traumatic brain injury. Dr. Narayan, welcome. By any set of standards, it's fair to say that, you have have, that you've enjoyed an illustrious medical career. So if I might ask, why is it that you chose neurosurgery as a particular interest within the practice of medicine? And a related question is, why did you decide to study medicine at CMC? So the answer to that question uh, is that you have to be careful what you read. Because when I was about 14 years old, I came across a book called Death Be Not Proud by John Gunther. It's a book that many of you may have read many, many years ago. Uh, it was a book written by uh, a father about his son's struggle with a malignant brain tumor. Ironically, it was based here in New York, and it was back in the 40s, 1946 to be exact. And the young man demonstrated unusual courage in his struggle against a tumor that ultimately uh, uh, killed him. It was a very touching book, very moving uh, story, and it convinced me that this was something that I wanted to do, uh, to go into medicine, to go into neurosurgery specifically. Uh, and part of the reason for that was it was a field which was in its infancy and there was a lot to be discovered. And I had a particular inclination to combine the practice of medicine and neurosurgery with research to try to come up with better answers for conditions for which we do not currently have great solutions. The second part of your question was why Velour? Um, this was back in the 60s and CMC Velour was the first neurosurgical unit in South Asia. Uh, it was certainly even then the top institution in the country for neurosurgery. And um, so given my uh, desire to go into neurosurgery, uh, in my mind, there was no better choice than uh, trying to get into CMC. Well, Raj, thank you for sharing that information. Can you describe for us what inspired you to pursue research as a component of your professional life? and the role that being a researcher has played in improving your ability to be an effective leader, innovator, and teacher. As I mentioned earlier, I've always thought that uh, research was an essential part of clinical practice because there are so many things we do not know, even to, to this day, uh, and we need to keep striving to be better. Now, the other part of it was the mentorship that I had. So I was fortunate that when I joined CMC in 69, my first principal, or what people in the US would know as the dean, was Dr. Jacob Chandy. 
for those who do not know, Dr. Chandy was the first neurosurgeon in India, and he founded the first department of neurosurgery in South Asia at CMC Vellore. He was uh, incredibly charismatic, very uh, hardworking, and he recruited uh, Dr. K.V. Mathai and Dr. Jacob Ibrahim, who, sus who sub subsequently became his successors. And Dr. Chandy retired when I was in my second year of medical school, so I never had the opportunity to work with him. But I worked very closely with Dr. Uh, Mathai and uh, Dr. Jacob Abraham, who uh, were in many ways, my role models. So uh, Jacob Abraham was, uh, of course, also a, an excellent surgeon, but he was also a great scientist. And one of the things that he taught me was that if you can make a little mark on your field by the time you're done, then you have succeeded. At the time, I remember thinking that making a small mark on the field was a low bar, that it was not ambitious enough. But as the years have gone by, uh, I have realized that it is, not it is not easy to make that little mark on the field. But I've tried. Thanks, Raj. Um, so you were also an educator providing lessons to future healthcare professionals. So my question to you is this, is teaching also something that is important to you? And if so, for what reasons would that be? Teaching has been certainly a very integral part of my career. Uh, I was looking back at the history of CMC neurosurgery and Dr. Chandy, who was the, the uh, founder of the department, uh, by the time he retired, and at that time he had to retire at the age of 60, uh, he had trained six, uh, sorry, 20 neurosurgeons who then went on to found departments of neurosurgery around India and then train other trainees of their own. Uh, in the course of my career now, I have been involved with the training of uh, almost a hundred neurosurgeons who have all gone on to uh, successful careers uh, of their own. So there is a certain geometric growth uh, of uh, effort that teaching uh, can um, uh, can give us. If I may just add something uh, relating to the activities, uh, which I think may be of some interest. Um, one of the things that I have done in recent years is to try to develop guidelines for the management of severe traumatic brain injury. Uh, the my, my research area in recent years has been related to a severe traumatic brain injury, which as many of you know, is one of the commonest public health problems all around the world and certainly in the developing world. And by, by chance, it also happens to be uh, that Bellore is the epicenter of head injury in India, which is one of the highest, has one of the highest levels of head injuries in the world, from road traffic accidents, from falls and so on. And managing these patients is critical because this usually happens to young people. And if they are not taken care of ideally, they become a major burden to, the, to their families. Uh, and so what we have tried to do is to help them have the best possible outcome from their injuries. 
And what that means is that they get the best possible care wherever they may be. And so our thinking was that it was not enough to have good care in a few select institutions, but to have a certain level of care wherever they might happen to be taken. And so we developed of like three decades ago guidelines in the US, which have subsequently been adopted by the American College of Surgeons and have also gone international. And with that, the quality of care, the quality of head injury management across this country has been raised substantially. What we are hoping to do is to create the same sort of process in India. And we have made the beginnings of, uh, of that uh, along with our Indian colleagues. And we hope that that process will continue to grow so that the quality of acute management, uh, particularly of, uh, of head injury, uh, becomes uh, more uniform and so patients will have the best possible care, understanding that the resources in a developing country are not the same as they are in uh, the developed world. But nevertheless, I think that we can make a big difference. Thanks. So, so I'm going to shift tops here a little bit. Um, so at the onset of your medical career, you were awarded a residency opportunity at the Medical College of Virginia, which brought you here to the United States. So, so my question is, at that time, was your education at CMC helpful to you as you took on these new responsibilities? Absolutely. I was very fortunate to have trained at CMC uh, at a time when there were uh, incredibly charismatic uh, mentors that I had the privilege of training under. So I've already mentioned two of them. But in addition, there was Dr. Bachavat, who was a biochemist, set up the first neurochemistry lab in the country. There was Dr. Mani Mani, who was a plastic surgeon with whom I was able to work. And there were many others. Uh, the bottom line is that once you have the opportunity to work with some of these people and to publish papers in international journals, then it opens up not only your mind, but also opens up your ability to make a global impact rather than a local impact. I just want to thank you for your time here this afternoon and um, let you know how much we appreciate all that you do on behalf of the foundation and CMC. Thank you.